Hi, this is Mrs. Austin, and we're here in the Pre-Calculus Statistics Unit, the second video, which covers margin of error and sampling for data gathering. Margin of error is an important thing to consider when we're looking at statistics, and also being able to sample a population appropriately is an important part of what you'll need to do as a researcher. So margin of error talks about the error that is inherent in any data that we gather. As you know, no one is perfect and no data is perfect, but we can be very close if we are careful. Margin of error usually arises because we don't gather data from every single member of a population. It tells us how close we can get, and it is usually expressed as a percent. In both of these slides, we see a picture of how the poll was conducted. And one of these tells about how a poll that was conducted, it says in 19 cases out of 20, the results based on such samples will differ by no more than three percentage points in either direction from what would have been obtained by seeking out all adult residents of New York State. So that means that if the poll reported 57% of people approve, then 19 out of 20 groups that you pick would have within 3% of that value. So it could be as high as 60%, it could be as low as 54%, but it will be within 3 percentage points. As you can see in the picture on the right, as you increase your sample size, your margin of error decreases. Being able to find the balance between an appropriate sample size and an appropriate margin of error is one of the things that's really important for readers. So the whole group that we're interested in is called the population. A portion of that group is called the sample. It's not always convenient or even possible to study an entire population because they can just be too big. Now, if we can study the variables of interest in the entire population, this is called a census, and that's exactly what the U.S. Census does, and by law, they have to get to everybody. That's why if you don't return your census form, they start calling you. When we can't do a census, either because it is inconvenient or because it's too expensive or just because it's impossible, we have to sample the population. So sampling is done when it is unreasonable to do a census of a population. Now there's many different types of sampling. The first type of sample is simple random. So you have your entire population, let's say it's all seniors at Greater Lowell, and in that sample everyone has an equal chance to be selected. We throw all your IDs into a giant bucket and we just pull them out at random until we get to the correct number of people we want for our sample. Another type of sampling that is still random sampling is stratified random sampling. In stratified random sampling, we divide the population into groups and we select some from each group. For example, if we still wanted to work with all seniors at Greater Lowell, we could divide that population into shops and select some students from each shop. Systematic is slightly different. In this type, we would select every nth member of the population in order to get our sample size. So if I wanted to sample 100 out of the approximately 500 seniors, then I would say I'll select every fifth member of the population. And I would just get a list of all the seniors, say from Mr. Murphy, and I would select every fifth member until I got to a sample size of 100. In Cluster sampling, we, sol we sort out the population into groups, and then everybody from a certain group in the population is in the sample automatically. So this may or may not be as good as a random sample, a simple random or a stratified random sample, but it still gets, you hope, a pretty good section of people. And then convenient sampling, we select based on ease of access. So I may decide to, out of all of the seniors, just ask the questions that I want to ask out of the first 100 seniors that I see. That would be the most convenient 
sample. How we choose samples depends on what we want to achieve. Do we want maximum convenience? Then pick convenience sampling. Do we need to know that we are getting representation from each of the specific groups? Then stratified random sampling might be better. Are you only able to go to a certain area, say of the building? Then cluster sampling could be a better choice for you. So lots of considerations on different types of sampling. How can we use a random number table or a random number generator to do random sampling? Okay, You can see a sample here at the bottom of a random number table. And the random number table is actually just those numbers 241983, 724152, 579108, etc. So the first thing you're going to do is assign numbers, which are usually two or three digit, but could be more than that, to all your possible candidates. So if I had a sample of 100 schools and I knew that I needed to select 15 of them for a survey, then I would assign each of my schools a two-digit code from 00 through 99. Second, I'm going to get my random number table. And third, I'm going to read the numbers from right to left. Actually, I'm going to read from left to right because that's what they did down here. You can read from right to left if you want to. Each number is going to generate a new sample member. As you can see, first we've picked school 24, followed by school 19, followed by school 83, followed by school 72, 41, 52. If you go on, you see I have for school 10, 49, for the 11th school, 21, then I get back to 24. I skip that because it's already been used. I skip 91 and 21. Those have already been used. I don't get a new two-digit pair until 27, and that's my 12th school. I can continue with this pattern for as long as I like. If you have to do multiple samples, then you can just start on a different row of the table because that will give you different random numbers. You can also use the Excel function RAND and uh, multiply by 100 or 200 to get digits that will generate sample elements or different participants in your sample. So that's two different ways that you can get random numbers for random sampling. And that's what you need to know for this unit on sampling and margin of error.